How the Kardashians spent the 4th of July. Jeezy and Halsey break up. And Gigi Hadid lashes out on another ZG hater. All that and more on today's rundown. Hey you guys, and welcome back to DHR. It's July the 5th. Yeah. Good 4th? Good 4th. You good 4th? Good 4th. May the 4th be May the 4th. Nope, not, it's not, not May. Not it's not July. July. <laughs> but you know what? July 5th is going to be even better. You guys, today on the show, we're going to be talking about how Ariana Grande's family is apparently pissed at her for getting engaged to Pete Davidson. Yeah, but first, you guys, what? you know who else is real pissed? Who? All the Tana Mojo fans that went to TanaCon, mm -hmm. they're so upset about the whole thing that they're now considering suing. Yikes. As we all know, Tana Mojo's event, TanaCon, ended up failing miserably. Turns out the convention oversold tickets, had a venue that couldn't fit the amount of people that showed up, they didn't even have security that was up to the task at hand, and they had so many other issues. Basically, the whole thing was a scam. Now, hundreds of fans who attended the con and were left somber and dehydrated are considering suing Good Times, the organization that sponsored it. One of the attendees, Anna Marie Olson, says, according to The Blast, that she's spearheading a possible class action lawsuit against the promoter because People who were subjected to the hellacious few hours deserve refunds and compensation for, quote, mistreatment during the event. She explained, quote, I started feeling less and less excited about the event because I had a feeling it would be very unorganized, but I hope for the best. After waiting for about five hours in the sun with no shade or water or food, a representative of Good Times made an announcement that the event was canceled for the day, but would resume as scheduled Saturday with an additional location. The next morning, TanaCon was canceled completely and there was no further information made available for people waiting in limbo. Anna Marie is seeking, quote, refunds on her tickets and travel and also compensation for her mistreatment during the event. And she's currently talking to law firms who help people following that whole fire festival disaster. She says there are actually about 200 people who are interested in joining the suit. If you've watched Shane Dawson's three-part documentary series that he posted on his YouTube channel, one of them revealed that the Good Time CEO, Michael Weiss, signed a contract with a ticketing agent that said if anything was to go wrong with the convention and people needed refunds, his company would be responsible for the compensation. Which means he is now responsible for coming up with about $325,000, which he does not have. Girl, let me tell you. Over the weekend, I watched those Shane videos like it was like like the inauguration. I had my popcorn, <laughs> the tea, I was sipping it. It was so juicy. So good. I feel bad though. I really do feel bad for everyone involved because mm -hmm. it's just an unfortunate situation. And I don't know who to believe in any of it with Michael yeah. Tanner or anyone. But it's just, it's just, I don't know. How do you feel about it? Okay, I was super glued to the Shane Dawson videos as well. Yeah. I couldn't stop watching. I remember when we were waiting for part three to come out, we were sitting there like, it has to come out any minute, right? Like it was like almost noon, we're like it has to be out. Right. And we all freaked out, especially when Ava, shout out to our girl Ava Gordy, because she is <laughs> the first voice you'll hear in part three. But <sighs> damn, I don't know who to believe. I know, Because I know. Michael seems to be lying, but Tana, I don't know if I really trust her 100%. I think everyone kind of lied about a few things because they know everyone a part of TanaCon is somewhat responsible. I don't think it's just one person. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how it all unfolds. I'm yeah, just... for sure. Okay, you guys, Halsey and Jeezy have decided to go their separate ways. On Tuesday, Halsey revealed to her fans that after a year of dating, she and Jeezy are taking some time apart from each other. Halsey shared via her Instagram story, quote, I normally keep this kind of thing private, but provided our public nature, I feel the need to inform my fans. Jeezy and I are taking some time apart. I'm eager to continue the upcoming passage of time, dedicating myself to my art and my career and the duration of my tour. I wish him the best. Thanks for respecting our privacy at this time. Fans all over were obviously devastated by the news, with one tweeting, quote, Halsey and g -Eazy broke up. The only couple that made me think love could be real just broke up. That's it. I'm so done with everything. While another tweeted, you know, I'm taking the news of g -Eazy and Halsey splitting a lot harder than I probably should be. However, even though a ton of fans were upset by the breakup, it seems as if a few of them certainly saw it coming. Before Halsey released her statement, a number of eagle-eyed fans noticed missing photos of Halsey and g -Eazy from her Instagram account 
count. While that move is 100% a sign that things have ended between a couple, Halsey then stirred the pot some more when she shared a picture of herself and her dog with a revised Drake lyric that read, quote, kiss my dog on the forehead and then kiss your ass goodbye. Days before Halsey announced that she and G-Eazy had split, she was spotted in Hollywood alongside her former rumored boo, Machine Gun Kelly, who was also my rumored boo, but whatever. If you can recall, Halsey and Machine Gun Kelly were linked before she started dating G-Eazy, but never confirmed whether or not they were ever the real deal, or if it was just a fling, or if they were just friends, though there was a lot of speculation about the nature of the relationship. But perhaps Halsey's outing with MGK was a major sign that there was trouble in paradise for her and G-Eazy, because that same day, Halsey and G-Eazy were both seen at the Post Malone show at the Hollywood Bowl, but she ended up with MGK just a few hours later in Hollywood. Sources at the Post Malone show also revealed that the two didn't really hang out at all during the set or backstage, according to a few TMZ sources. And in photos and vids of Halsey and MGK, Halsey is seen sitting on the sidewalk having a smoke break while MGK touched her head before sitting next to her. The two definitely seem pretty comfortable with each other, but whether or not they're friends or something more, they're both single and free to do whatever they want. I guess time will tell. Renee? Drew, how are you How are you doing today? You guys, let me tell you. If you don't already know, <laughs> I am in love with Machine Gun Kelly. Does he know me? No. Am I crazy? Yes. Am I mad at Halsey now? Yes. That's <laughs> so, <how> I <laughs> I'm like guessing you don't support this relationship? No, no I don't. But I knew, that I figured that they weren't done because after Machine Gun Kelly made that breakup song, everyone knew it was about Halsey. I knew. The feelings weren't done. Well, well apparently not. I'm wondering now though, do you think G-Eazy was just a rebound? Because they um, wrote that, I mean, they had that song, He and I. It's He and I, right? Uh, Tim, him, him and I, or something like that. Him and yeah. I. Well, that's when I was like, oh man, they're like real in love with each other. But yeah. was he just a rebound this whole time, is the question. I don't know. I, I low key think they were in love, mm -hmm. but somewhat of a rebound. Just because I feel like Jeezy and Machine Gun Kelly are like cut from the same cloth. You know? Oh, yeah. She has for a sure. type, so it's kind of like, eh. I'm gonna go with this clone of you, but not really a clone. <laughs> what I was also feelings. curious about was the Drake lyric that she revised in her Instagram caption. Yeah. Because like, that kind of implies something went wrong. It's more than them just taking space because they're right. busy and going through stuff. Like it sounds like g Easy did something. Yeah. I just wonder what that could mean. It's never good when you tell someone to kiss your butt. Nope. So, as I'm sure you know, Drew, mm. Gigi Hadid has been clapping back at a ton of fans who have been upset about her getting back together with Zayn, yeah. and she has done so once again, but this time uh, with a fan that is claiming her relationship is fake. On Tuesday, Gigi Hadid fired back at an Instagram account called Exposing Fake Ass Gigi, which is a page that posts anonymous confessions about Gigi and Zayn's relationship and asks for people's opinions regarding it. So Gigi, who is frequently tagged in the account's post, decided to actually respond to one of them. So on one of their photos, she commented, quote, seems like you guys tag me in a new post every day. Please stop, it's just negative. I really have no hard feelings towards you. I just know what a beautiful world there is to go out and live instead of trying to dissect a relationship between two people that you don't even know and that you do not see a 99% of for someone who is virtually inactive on the app. I don't need his follow, my eyes are tattooed on his chest. Well, wow, that's a pretty epic quote. She continued on the takedown and called out those who think her relationship with Zayn is just for promotion, writing, quote, the energy you put into this does not serve you or your life in any way, kids. Truly beating a dead horse. She went on to say, you may call it promo, but she posts pictures of her boyfriend like anyone else, and that's not that serious, so give it a break. She also mentioned that this would be her last comment and she didn't want to continue on the fight, which makes sense. But that actually wasn't all Gigi had to say on the matter. When a commenter criticized her for not privately DMing the account, she agreed that that would have been a better choice, but that she wanted everyone to realize how hurtful the hate was. She wrote back, quote, this is all just very frustrating and I'm only human. I've just had enough. Just because I'm a celebrity doesn't mean I don't feel or that my time is too precious to not listen to what people have to say. I'm sure you can see how assumptions like this can be hurtful. Especially about someone I love deeply. If you guys love him too, sooner or later, you'll realize we're on the same team. I get the whole letting hate get to you and I'm sure mm. when you're getting back in a relationship that once people I think really did support, but then since they broke up and got back together, she's gotten a lot of backlash. Yeah. I get it. I just think like, girl, Gigi, the hate's gonna keep going. Don't keep feeding into it, yeah. you know? I think it's hard. I mean, I wouldn't know what it's like to be in a public relationship like that. Can't so relate. Can't relate, <laughs> but like I can imagine if there was an account that constantly tagged me in negative things about relationship, eventually I'm gonna be like, 
get a life, you know? <laughs> so like, I, I get that and it just sucks. I feel like people need hobbies. Why is that a, a thing? <laughs> right, right, like why does this account exist? But it's weird. I have another question that mm. I actually am curious about. Do you think it's weird? Mm. I think it's a little weird. What? That he doesn't follow her on Instagram. I get she's not that active, but That's like, interesting. why hasn't he just followed her? Why is that even something that hasn't happened yet since maybe, they got back together? Maybe they've talked about it because like, you know how if you're you're invested in someone and you want to see everything that they're doing and it becomes like an obsess yep. obsession and you just, it's what? not healthy, you know? <laughs> what are you talking Who? about? That's Never crazy. Done. <laughs> but you know, so like maybe it's yeah. just like, I don't want to see it, like whatever, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. To yeah. each their own. All right, you guys, like we said, yesterday was 4th of July and I had, did you have a good 4th of July? I had a great 4th of July. It was good. Yeah. Had some hot dogs, had some chips, had some wine, what about you? I'm still, my stomach is jacked up. <laughs> it was jacked up. You guys, the Kardashians also had a great 4th of July. Just in case you were wondering what the Kardashians were up to yesterday, don't worry, we've got you covered. While I was eating burgers and hot dogs yesterday, Kim was spitting her fourth on a lake in an undisclosed location and just couldn't decide what she wanted to do. I mean, from the looks of it, she had a lot of options to choose from. Okay, which, should I go on the water slide first or the trampoline? What should I do first? <laughs> Kim also decided that yesterday she would try wakeboarding for the first time. Luckily, she posted it to her Insta story, and let's just say that Kim struggled a bit. In fact, let's look at all the times she fell before she finally gets the hang of it because it's hilarious. And oh Anyway, Kim also posted some 4th of July throwbacks on her app. She said, since it's the 4th of July, I wanted to throw it back to these pictures we took in 2008 when we had a pool party. Such fun memories. We made a cake and everyone got thrown in the pool. I hope everyone has a great 4th of July today. One is a shot of her in the pool and another is a major throwback with Kendall, Kylie, and Adrian by Lone. Speaking of Kendall, she was spotted hanging out with her man Ben Simmons at Chloe's 4th of July party. They were all cozied up with each other and not afraid to show some PDA, they were spotted in Chloe's Insta stories looking extremely happy. Shout out to Coco and Tristan, second annual 4th of July party. Happy birthday to my boy Lucas, you already know. Chloe Kardashian took a break from her party though to post this stunner on her Instagram and we are obsessed. She looks so good. She captioned the photo, Mom's Home, Yeezy Season 7. And Courtney is still exploring Italy and looks like she even ran into one of the founders of Dolce & Gabbana. Well, keeping up with the Kardashians we are. Yeah, we are. <laughs> um, Kim Kardashian made me wish that I spent my 4th of July just like on a lake by right? myself. Doesn't it look nice? It looked so relaxing. <sighs> And so not day. Kim. Yeah. Like I wouldn't be like, oh, you know what Kim's gonna do for the fourth? Be by herself on a boat in a lake. I like it though, cause she's so low key now. I know, yeah. I like it too. And also, have you, cool. did you see her swimsuit? Yeah, she looks really cute. She looks so cute, That's I love really that swimsuit. Cute. According to reports, Ariana Grande's family is terrified about her speedy engagement to Pete Davidson. But like, are you surprised? I'd be terrified too. Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson got engaged after only a month of dating, as far as we know. And honestly, by rom-com standards, the whole thing is pretty adorable. But understandably, Ariana's family is a little bit concerned, at least according to reports. Not only did they get engaged after a month of dating, they both have since gotten representative tattoos of their relationship, and according to Radar Online, Frankie Grande and Mama Joan are not happy about any of it. A suppose Grande family source told Radar Online, quote, of course, everyone is happy for her, but they are also super worried that she is going to get her heart ripped out. Everyone thinks that he is using her, but she is not listening to anyone and is shutting out anyone who tries to wish her anything but happiness and joy. Another issue, according to the reports, is that Pete is allegedly smoking marijuana every day to combat his health-related issues after previously going sober in 2017. Apparently, Ariana is okay with him smoking weed again, but Ari's brother Frankie is not. The source said, quote, the red flags are everywhere and Ariana refuses to see any of it. Ariana's brother Frankie is sober for over a year and cannot believe that Pete thinks that smoking weed every day is okay after struggling with addiction. He has told Ariana this and she doesn't want to hear any of it. She's in love and is convinced he is her soul partner. Nothing can change her mind. 
Also, you guys, apparently Ariana bought a $16 million condo in New York City for her and Pete to live in, so it doesn't just look the best to the family. Okay, so I see both sides to this. Me too. If I was her mom, of course I would be concerned after only being together for a month. I'd be like, what are you doing? This is way too fast. But also, I can understand Ariana's side because when I like someone and someone tries to tell me that I can't be with them, oh, yeah. it makes it just makes you want to be with the person more. So like, I get it. Mm -hmm. And she's young, we're like literally the same age. So like, <laughs> I would be doing the same thing, but also like, gang. And I wonder if this is even true. Like, is her family actually mad? Here's the thing. I think her. Think? I think it makes complete sense for her family to be terrified yeah. because I'm sure her brother and mom are protective over her. I mm -hmm. don't doubt that. I also think it's really hard to believe that after, I mean, such a quick, like it was a whirlwind romance. Mm -hmm. They met. Well, they, I guess they met in 2016 when she was in SNL, yeah. but they uh, started dating. Then they were engaged within a month, as far as we know. Yeah. I don't think any family member would be like, this sounds really great and well right. thought out. Right. So I get where they're coming from. I I also fully believe that I could see Ariana saying, unless you wish us love and happiness, I don't want to hear any of this. We're going to get married. It's like Ariel from The Little Mermaid. I know. You know, so we'll see what happens. I think that there are a lot of red flags. Yeah. I don't think he's using her. I think the red flags are just like, how do you know you want to be with someone for the rest of your life yeah. without being for them for at least a significant amount of time? Yeah. It's just sticky. I hope, mm -hmm. I wish them the best though. Yes, yeah, same. Maybe it'll work out. Hopefully. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> all right, guys, that is all we have to talk about today. But now we want to hear from you guys. So what do you think? Do you think that Pete really could be using Ariana Grande? Do you think that her family is that terrified? Let us know your thoughts right down in the comments below. Mm -hmm. You guys, I also have a question for you because uh, I'm butthurt about Machine Gun Kelly. Uh, I didn't know you guys broke up. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> I'm finding out <laughs> uh, publicly right now. Um, do you guys approve of Machine Gun Kelly and Halsey reuniting, or do you ship Halsey and G? Let us know. All right, guys. Comment section below. We will be back here tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow. Cool. Bye. Have a good one. <laughs> you guys, before you go, you could either stay here and take prom pictures with Renee and I, or you could click right over here <laughs> to hear all about Holly, what's her name? Haley Baldwin, Haley Baldwin and Justin Bieber's car breaking down. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. But also, you guys, make sure you subscribe because we're back here every day except Saturday. So just like hit it right, right here. Mm -hmm. Somewhere there. Just click it. Right there. You want to do it. <laughs>